Hi everybody, uh, my name is James McLean and um, I did four seasons with Micron. I did Micron 2015 um, with lovely Rachel and Ellie and Steve and we taught two plays that year. Um, Raising Agents, all about the WI. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful story to tell. Um, met some really inspiring people and uh, and one of each all about fish and chips um, probably speaking on behalf of all of us um, but I think we ate more fish and chips during the rehearsal process for that show than I'd probably eaten in my entire life up to that time <laughs> um, yeah and then 2016 um, with lovely Steph and Matt and Claire and we did Canary Girls all about the ladies who worked in the munitions factories um, so called because the TNT made their skin go yellow it was actually very very serious they were being poisoned um, show that was full of heart and pure all about chocolate and um, yeah, not at all based on um, Cadbury's or anything like that. Um, but yeah, just really, really great story all about the history of chocolate and the chocolate industry. And I think it's probably fair to say that we ate a lot of chocolate that year. We also ate a lot of cheese that year um, for some reason. Uh, a lot of everything, actually. We ate a lot of food. That Toby Carvery became a really big thing. That year. I think we'd done it in 2015 as well. I think there'd been some Toby Carvery. I'm sure that Ellie, Steve and Rach would say that we'd been some Toby Carvery. But Toby Carvery became a big thing in 2016. We would plan two show days around being able to go to a Carvery between. It's great. Um, 2017, um, with lovely Claire and Rose and Craigie. And we did um, In at the Deep End. All about the RNLI, saving lives at sea. Um, tremendous show. We met some amazing people and went to some wonderful places um, performing that show. And our other show, all about the YHA, Best Foot Forward. Brilliant show, lovely. Met some great people again. Um, told a lovely story full of full of laughs and full of heart and yeah and then 2018 wow um so i i told then with um oh uh ros and chris and daisy and nearly lizzie lizzie unfortunately had to became not very well um and and had to leave the job that came out last year um and so, yeah, it was Chris, Ros and Daisy, and we did um, Revolting Women, all about the fight for the vote, um, which was a um, really exciting show to do. I think the riff from that song, we kept singing in our heads all the time. And um, our other show that year was um, Get Well Soon, all about our wonderful NHS. Um, really kind of prominent at the moment, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, I've got some great memories of those four years. Okay, so I'm just trying to decide on my favourite Micron venue. Uh, this is hard, it's hard. Um, there are so many places, so many moments throughout the tour. It's like you kind of go, like you think about being near Blissworth and Stoke Brewing and places like that and you go, oh, it's like June, May, June time. Um, and then, you know, you're on the River Thames and it's July and the sun's really warm and it's really lovely. And, you know, you go to places like the Bounty at Bourne End. Um, it's just crazy. It's so exciting. And then you get onto the Oxford Canal, you know, you're kind of August then, and it's all really little canals again, rural countryside. Um, 
little communities, go to some lovely places, um, coming up there, oh some lovely places, um, then on to the River Severn, by then you kind of end of August, September. You kind of start touching on some of the places you went to in June as well, you get very close by when you get to sort of, you know, Rowney Green and places like that, you're really close to where you started. And um, then on to the River Severn, Camp House at Grimley, <sighs> Grimley Gorilla. Uh, always managed to avoid the warning from management about not having the Grimley Gorilla. For those of you who don't know, Grimley Gorilla is um, a drink which has long been served at the Camp House, Grimley, the River Severn, North of Worcester. And it's a pint of really kind of like potent scrumpy, um, looks a little bit like a sample to be honest, uh, really potent scrumpy with a shot or two or three or even four of gin. Um, it, it tastes revolting when you first taste it, but then it kind of, you come alive. Um, Micron tradition that you attempt at least one, um, there have been stories of senior people within Micron, not to mention people like Mike Lucas, having several and falling into bushes and things like that. I think that's folklore. I don't know if that's true. I certainly wouldn't want to say anything about that. Um, but let's just say you don't need a lot of them for things like that to start happening. Um, oh, the rising sun at Berkhamstead, what a great place that is. Um, lovely, lovely. Nigel and Mark, brilliant people. Um, it's just so exciting performing right by the boat and um, meeting great people, sticking all the set on the boat afterwards and then just having a beer or some wine and just some good cheer. Um, oh, where else? Oh, Spade Oak Farm on the River Thames. That's always a nice one. Lovely Cath Acres and Born NWI. Um, it's really, really good fun there with the trains going past. Um, you kind of have to stop and acknowledge them really, but you can slow the show down or speed it up a little bit just so that the train happens at the right time, which is something that's quite fun. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, oh, what other favourite venues? Oh God, there are so many. Um, the Camp House, we've talked about that. Um, oh, Millgate Art Centre in Delft. That was a really, really great little venue. Uh, the Swan at Dob Cross. That was another special little place. Um, pff, Master Mechanics. It's got to be up there. It's nothing like a home crowd for a Micron show. Um, I think when we were doing our WI show, um, we went to see a lot of... Um, women's institutes all over the country and it was an amazing experience to go share the show with them just the the kind of wealth of love and support and appreciation for the blue eye was astonishing um yeah really great um when we were doing uh the rnli show saving lives at sea in at the deep end, we performed in lifeboat stations quite a lot of the time. And it's truly amazing. I mean, pff, you know, Lytham, RNLI, we went to visit those guys and did some research for the show. And they were all so lovely and so dedicated and committed and, and just so selfless in their kind of commitment to saving lives at sea and when we went and performed the show for them it was really humbling actually um really beautiful scarborough rnli another one um i remember last that you know in 2018 when we went to winsford to the academy in winsford and um, we were performing revolting women there um lovely audience and there'd been um some people in the community had made um, figures of um, suffragettes and suffragists, um, like scarecrows, which were around. Um, so, uh, favourite Micron moments. Oh, there's been so many. Um, <laughs> 
I mean, there are so many, just, it's, there's so many little moments that it's hard to put your, you can't describe them fully. Um, just like, there's just odd little moments, like, for example, but having a, a full Elsan and having it on a magna car which has very little suspension and you're trying to take it along a bumpy canal towpath. <laughs> Moments like that. Um yeah. <laughs> or um or just moments when, you know, you might just kind of brush past a tree and a cup goes into the cut and, you know, just a cup of tea. Um, so many moments like that that you just kind of have to laugh at, really. Um, just moments where, you know, on a sort of like after a long day and you're all a bit tired and then you've done a really exciting show and then you start playing um, Random Jukebox, which was a little game that we used to play where you had to guess a song. I think we did that in 2015. I think that might be when we started doing that. And... Um, you know, so many little moments like that. I think um, <clears throat> certain key things really stand out. One was um unfortunate instance of Godstow Bridge on the River Thames past Oxford and the River Chimney, which was still on the boat. The River Chimney, of course, is slightly longer than the Canal Chimney because canal bridges tend to be lower. Uh, Godstow Bridge, however, is quite a low bridge, and depending on the tide, it, you, you might have to be careful. Um so we were approaching the bridge. Now, bearing in mind that on a boat, you're not really moving that fast. But that's the weird thing, because there's there's a kind of a slowness to these things. You see them going to happen, but there's also an inevitability, because you can't just stop. So it's like, oh my God, this bridge is too low. We've got the river chimney on. We need to, right, so you try and slow the boat down, but the flow of the river's still carrying you. There's people crossing the bridge. It's a lovely sunny Saturday. Um, you know, and you're like, we're going to hit that. We're going to hit that. I think Marianne even had time to go into the boat and get some oven gloves to try and take the chimney off, um, which obviously we couldn't manage. Paul Steph was on the back. And then, you know, you start going under the bridge and you kind of hang fire because there's this, you know, you're waiting for this massive scrape. And it's like... <laughs> um, you know, it's all fine. I mean, the chimney was a bit bent a bit, but, you know, managed to bend it back in. It wasn't too bad. Um... And then blow me down a couple of weeks later if we didn't do something similar with Claire and, and the book, you know, the book became went into the cut. And Claire's like, I'm so sorry, Marianne. It was very funny. Um, you know, these things happen, I suppose. Um, I think it was 2017, we had some really sort of significant weather. Um, there was one time when we were doing it at the deep end and we were at the bounty at Bourne End and we were underneath a, an awning because of the weather and during the scene in the second half where they're going out to the shout and um, we literally had to stop the show because the rain on the tarpaulin was so loud. It was hilarious. Um, and also later in that year we were doing a show at the Folly at Napton and it was raining so heavily and we had the lights out and the lights shorted so we just kind of had to end the show and just be like look guys um yeah this happens and this happens and the end um I mean these kind of things when they happen you're like ooh, but actually you know on reflection they're quite funny um I remember last year um Roz and Chris had got off the boat to go ahead to a lock and um, Ross had her flip-flops on and we were like, oh, no, you can't, you know. She was like, oh, just chuck my trainers across. And so, of course, like he, man, I got her trainers and I was stood on the front of the boat. And I threw the first one, which kind of circled through the air and, and landed on the towpath absolutely fine. And then just as so I was about to throw the second one, I just had that moment of going, ooh, uh, you know, should I be doing this kind of thing? And I kind of threw it under arm and it spiralled up and up and up and up and kind of and then came down and landed about three feet in front of where I was and into the water. And um, <laughs> and Roz was obviously like, oh, no can do. But I knew she was really annoyed. So when we got to the lock, I got the boat hook and went off back down the canal and I managed to fish it out. And do you know what? It was OK because it hadn't become submerged. Um, and we laughed about it afterwards. Didn't really laugh at the time, but we did laugh about it afterwards. And um, 
Oh, I can think of various moments when, you know, emptying the L sandwich is always a funny thing. It just is. It's just funny. Um, yeah. Hi. So, uh, got a little joke for you. Well, it's actually a story. Um, and this happened to me the other day, actually, because I was in the, in the supermarket and this lady was buying a big turkey. Obviously going to stick it in a freezer, you know, in case you're on a lockdown. And, um... And I was like, oh, wow, that's a really good idea. So I said to Richard, I said, you know what, Let's we'll get a turkey. We can keep it in the freezer and we can have it, you know. So it seems like a good idea. So anyway, I went out yesterday and I got this turkey and came back this morning. And it uh, came back last night. Like, I don't know how long you can keep a turkey in the freezer, really. I thought you could keep a turkey in the freezer for a long time. But anyway, it got back last night and put this turkey in the freezer. And this morning, when I checked, it was dead. 